So to get to your ultimate health goals, let's talk about why you're having trouble going to sleep and why you're having trouble staying asleep. Hi, I'm Amanda Lovett Jones, Australian naturopath and CEO of Functional Health and Apothecary.com. Over the last few weeks, we have had a series of patients that are coming in and complaining about poor sleep quality. And there's a common demographic, usually the, over the age of 35 to 60, and they're experiencing difficulty either trying to get to sleep, it's taking between 45, um, over 45 minutes to over an hour to get to sleep, and they're having trouble staying asleep. So they're either, either waking up several times in the night or they're just very, very restless and having just poor sleep quality. So I thought this was a really good um, time to discuss the five most common factors that can impact sleep quality. Number one is stress. This can't be such a surprise to you. Over the last 12 months to 18 months, it has been the most globally, physically and psychologically stressful time and period. So it's understandable. However, if you are still, if your body is still producing all these stress hormones, you're getting a sustained release of both cortisol and adrenaline. These are important hormones. They're there for a fight or flight response. They're there to keep us safe. They're there to acknowledge danger. However, if they're sustained and they're never disengaged, then the body cannot rest. The mind cannot rest. And common symptoms of stress, and people usually know if their causative factor for poor sleep quality is stress, is a monkey mind. Your brain just does not switch off. That can be your nervous system is just frazzled and you just think and think and think and think. Another thing if you are experiencing physical stress would be uh, restless leg syndrome, could be um, getting up multiple times or just moving a lot. Your partner might say that you just don't stop moving all night. Um, the second thing would be hormones. And this is of course m more prominent with women who are over the age of 45 and are experiencing symptoms of perimenopause or menopause. Now what happens here is your sleep can be disrupted due to um, low progesterone levels or a progesterone estrogen imbalance. Now progesterone is a hormone that induces sleep. So if you're not producing enough progesterone, this could of course cause um, irregular sleep patterns. Also, if you have imbalance in your hormones, you might have hot flashes or things that are keeping you up at night, either cold flashes or hot flashes. Cold flashes are less talked about, but they're even more real. There's a ton that you can do with that and I highly recommend seeing a female reproductive specialist who could work with you and get your labs done of your hormone levels so that you understand where you're at in each phase of that um, new moon or new, um, new chapter. The third thing that I wanna talk about is chemical exposure. Now you might be thinking of true like radiation. However, chemical exposure can be nicotine, can be caffeine, can be alcohol. It can also be a side effect of many prescription medications. Beta blockers and statins and thing actually can overstimulate or impact the nervous system so that you are not having good quality sleep. Um, secondarily, your liver might be really struggling with the chemical exposure that it's had, or it could just be time for a detox. Symptoms of this could be itching skin, it could be dark rings around your eyes, or if you're waking up at the same time every night and you see a repetitious pattern, um, this could be an indication that that particular body uh, system or organ is needing a little bit more love. A few days ago, I posted on Instagram and Facebook about waking up at a certain time every every night. And I reflected on the traditional Chinese medicine body clock, which um, believes or goes under the uh, philosophy that your qi or your energy flows through the body in, the, in a way like a clock um, in a 24 hour period. And if you are noticing that you are waking up, especially at night, or if your symptoms are worse during the day at the exact same time of the day, I highly recommend writing that down. For example, and as it relates to sleep, if you're waking up at the exact same time of night, it could be that that particular body system or that particular body organ is really struggling and needs some care or TLC. 
For example, if you, as how does it relate to chemical exposure? If you're waking up at 2.30 a.m. every morning or, or at night and you're noticing this consistently, that could be an indicator that your liver is requiring a little bit more love and you could improve in, or increase liver detoxification by increasing your antioxidant content. We're talking green tea, quercetin, resveratrol, vitamin C, vitamin D3. We um, can... Uh, support you and support healthy detoxification through milk thistle, dandelion root, rosemary, all these beautiful herbs, schizandra, which increases phase one and phase two liver detoxification. So that could be an indicator. You might be finding that that's the cause of you waking up regularly or having sleep disruption. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about, so what did we do already? We did stress, we did hormones, we did chemicals, Screen time, and I want to talk about screen time as it relates to teenagers as well. So, if you are having a screen or having a screen in bed and it's after 8 p.m., the increased light exposure can actually decrease natural release of melatonin. And melatonin, of course, is a hormone or a natural a neurotransmitter that regulates your sleep cycle. If you are having light, and regular light does suppress that, which is why um, in, in the Northern Hemisphere, in places like Alaska or Norway, where in the summertime they're having 23 hours of, of light, many people who are not used to that have, very, have a really difficult time sleeping. It's the same with your phone. So if you can be really disciplined about it, not have your phone on, or watch TV after 10 to 30 at night, that's gonna really help you regulate your sleep patterns. And you will know pretty quick, you will know if that resonates with you, you will know. Now I am expecting that teens are experiencing this a lot because they're attached to their phones, they're married to their phones. So if you're finding that your, your teen is experiencing poor mood and poor sleep patterns, really addressing that um, screen time is important. And the last thing I wanna talk about is your eating habits. If you are eating in bed, eating late at night, especially high sugary foods, we should never lay down flat to eat. We should never eat in bed. It really upsets um, your sleep and it's just not good for your digestion. So that's an easy, relatively easy one to fix. Also having sugar throughout the day can impact your sleep quality. So those are the five things that we can um, easily address. And if you're finding yourself struggling with sleep or having poor sleep quality, I would look at those five things first um, to get a better quality of sleep. Thank you for listening. If you're liking our content, um, please subscribe to Functional Health and Apothecary and go to our website, functionalhealthandapothecary.com.